sent as far as grab yourself a glass of water or a cup of tea and spend the next few minutes with me. Don't believe everything you hear and check your facts. Do your own research. What that means is don't believe everything I tell you. Check it out. Ha! Don't you want to know what my butterflies are saying? What? I do. Don't you want to know what my butterflies are talking? Don't take the blue pill. You only go insane. Follow the red butterfly and you get to use your brain. Ha <laughs> ha. Yes. Ha <laughs> ha. Ah, what's up, everybody? <laughs> How you doing? What's cracking? What's cracking? What's cracking? I'll tell you. I got some news to share with you. And if you don't know it, now you will. Hey. Well, as promised, I am going to start this show off with what I did not show you in episode 51 and um, I've actually thought long and hard about this because <laughs> I like to be respectable of everybody but um, this was brought to my attention and the funny thing is you know I'm always talking about looking past what's in front of you and the big picture and all that kind of stuff well I'm not perfect okay I try very hard to practice what I preach most of the times I do pretty well because I'm all about being positive and loving and you know and stuff but um somebody showed me this the other day I know you guys are like just get to it already god it's like a soap opera the build up takes 15 minutes and the punchline is 30 seconds but um you know but I you know I support my LGBT community you know transgender is the whole nine yards but something was brought to my attention and it blew me away so um I just want to show you, let me see if I can cover this up, because I don't want you to see the headline, but I'm going to try to show you this, because it was shown to me, and I literally did not see what was right in front of me. I'm hoping that you can see that, okay? If you can, it's a doll in a dress, okay? The headline read... A Ken doll is dressed in pink buttercream for a cake made by Sacramento's Freeport Bakery. Now, the funny thing is, I looked at this picture probably 50 times, and I read it. And it said, a Ken doll is dressed in a pink buttercream cake. As many times as I looked at this dang thing, it never clicked in my brain that that was a Ken doll <laughs> in a pink buttercream dress. Now, I don't mean any disrespect, okay? But I just... Ken is wearing a dress with a necklace in a in a tiara and stuff so anyway it caught me off guard and I guess it caught a lot of other people off guard too I'm, I'm not saying I have a big problem with it but I mean look let's get real it was shocking all right I do not see an actual man man in a dress every day when you see men wearing dresses most sometimes wow I just put my just put my foot in this I shouldn't even have talked about this because I know I'm just messing it up <laughs> but you know it's like you know most men that are in dresses are usually transgender men or um you know drag queens you know and stuff but I just to see a Ken doll in a pink dress with his muscles and he tear 
and it just kind of threw me off. And it threw a lot of other people off too. So here goes. Bakery gets blowback over Ken doll cake. Uh, Freeport Bakery's creation featuring a Ken doll decked out in a tiara and a pink dress has created an uproar on Facebook. The saga began when co-owner Marlene uh, Goltzer posted a photo of the cake with the caption, Ken's looking good. The buttermilk flavored cake, which features the doll with a white tiara and a pink dress, was custom ordered by a customer, according to um, Goltzeller. Soon after, some people attacked the cake and she noticed a drop in people liking the Sacramento's Bakery's Facebook page. So she said, I just thought it was a pretty cake. You know, I didn't think of it as a political, you know, problem or any repercussions. And I wasn't even trying to make a stand. So after Godzeller asked uh, uh, Neeson's for support, the post went viral with thousands of people sharing the image. News organizations from Australia and Canada were calling Godzeller about the $49.95 cake creation. Well, we've done tons of cakes before. It's not a big deal to us. We don't ask questions. But Godzeller did not think this particular cake crossed any line. You know, the bakery, you know, won't make certain cakes such as ones that are X-rated or featured negative or hurtful verbiage. But we're in business of bringing joy to people, she said, and that's it. So I'm going to show you this again. This is the, uh, hold on a second here, if I can get it. Um, so this is the Ken doll uh, cake. So here we have Ken dressed in a pink dress and tiara. And I mean, I've, I've gotten cakes from Freeport Bakery and they're delicious. I'm not going to stop going to Freeport Bakery because they made a cake showing a man in a dress. But... You know, it kind of threw me off guard. So let me know what you think about that. Do you think it's funny? Do you think it's stupid? Do you think it's cool? Do you think we're going too far with this whole, you know, everything? Just, I'm just curious as to what your opinion is. So, so anyway, um, moving right along, here's a cool article. You know, I'm always talking about China, 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 but Uber is to sell to its rival in China. See, it's all about, it's all about the money. So this is a New York Times uh, article from Hong Kong and it says Uber's future in China seemed to hold promise. Despite intense local competition, the market was one of Uber's largest by total number of rides. Well, yeah, in China, my God, you, have you ever seen, have you ever seen how many people are in China? Have you ever seen those viral videos? Have you ever seen how many people are on a China beach? It's like people stuck in a sardine can. You can't even you can't even walk or do anything. So yeah, of course Uber is gonna explode in China. All them dang people riding. Okay, never mind. Anyway, um, <laughs> a Chinese operation is the professional project of Uber co-founder Travis Kalanick who traveled regularly to the country and gave speeches that borrowed the jargon of Chinese Communist Party officials. His interest was backed up by billions of dollars in investment. So, you see, everything revolves around money. And there's no right and wrong when it comes to money. Seriously, you and I are normal people. I think we're normal people. But we know right and wrong. But in the business world... You know, when money talks and you have that, you know, million dollar yacht on the table versus feeding somebody's kid, unfortunately, they don't know you. They don't know your kid. And they don't really give a rip about you or your stupid kid. They really they want their yacht. You know, they're not thinking about feeding you. Their family's fine. I mean, I'm not saying all rich people are nasty, but, or I'm not even, I'm not even focusing on rich people. I'm talking about the money here. And as you can see, the money is where it's at. If there's no money in it, then they don't even want to deal with you. 
you know, and, uh, and listen to this. Uber had pushed its way into a country that has gone almost untouched by major U.S. Uh, tech companies in recent years. Now, its progress was widely reached and discussed by entrepreneurs and investors alike as a model for how to reach China's 600 million internet users. Now, you see, did you hear what I just said? They're using that as a model to reach. So this is all about, well, it's also, too, it's about reaching out, you know, and, uh, and you know, and connecting. But, um, you know, here, look at here, we have about $2 billion of investment in the Chinese market. Then they get a $7 billion share in a firm, you know, that's likely to grow. And then as you go on here, under the terms of the deal, the new company's estimated worth in combination of Didi Chuck's $28 billion vision. <laughs> wow. $28 billion. And on top of that, another $7 billion. Man, you know what? When you first heard Uber... It was laughed at and, uh, you know, but look at it now. Look at how Uber has skyrocketed. Seriously, it started out really good and then it went into murder and corruption and fraud. And now China's got their hands on it. Isn't that just wonderful? Anyway, moving right along, I just talked some smack about Walmart. You know, Walmart... I don't know any place that has better prices than Walmart. I don't know anywhere that can be uh, Walmart except the Dollar Tree, the Dollar Store, or the 99 cent store. But, uh, you know, Walmart, for some reason, it seems like they're just cursed. And I don't mean cursed like they're not making any money. But have you seen all of the videos on YouTube about people that shop at Walmart? I don't understand it. Walmart could be in the Queen's backyard and you will still find the same... <laughs> I'm serious. Walmart could be in Queen Elizabeth's backyard and you will still find the same kind of picking crazy people running around half naked, wearing all kinds of weird stuff, doing all kinds of outrageous things. I was in there the other day and I was just shocked at some of the things that I saw. And, you know, I really wanted to take out my camera and just do a little quick snap. But I thought twice about it. <laughs> I didn't want somebody to be looking at me going... If I can't unsee this, you can't either. And then I go viral. I don't want to go viral in a negative light. I'd rather go viral saying something happy or something funny. But yeah, Walmart is off the hook. So moving on. Walmart is buying online retailer Jet.com. Man, these people are in big, big business. Walmart is like NASA. They're taking over. Now listen to this. In New York, uh, Walmart is buying fast-growing online retailer Jet.com. Guess for how much? Oh, Lord. Yeah, I'm so lost, all right. Isn't it funny how sometimes my music is just right on cue? Three billion dollars in cash. What? <laughs> my battery oh whoa, whoa 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 that is not even it that's not it let me start over so then your eyes can cross along with me walmart is buying fast-growing online retailer jet.com for three billion dollars in cash plus three hundred million dollars in stock scooping up a newcomer that launched a year ago with the intention of challenging online leader Amazon. Damn it. Didn't I just say, what did I just say about Amazon? Now looky here. See, as soon as you think that you're king of the mountain, somebody is going to come and mess with you. They're going to come and try to shake you up. Wow. The hefty price underscores how Walmart is trying to compete more aggressively and effectively for younger and more affluent customers as it has seen its online business growth slow 
even with big investments in distribution centers and expanding services. So as part of this deal, Jet.com co-founder and CEO Mark Lore will oversee both that site and Walmart.com, and they will report to Walmart Stores Incorporated Chief Executive Doug McMillan. Man, you know what? I tell you what, when you get some extra change, what you need to do is start putting that little bits of change in your piggy bank and saving it. Because if we were buying these stocks like Jet.com and Uber, if we had our ear to the ground, like Martha Stewart did with that, well, anyway, um, if we had our ear to the ground, you know, then we would be able to get the jump on some of these things, and we could invest pennies into stocks. And in a year or so, we could actually have a little bit of change in our pocket, too. That's where it's at. These stocks and bonds, people, well, not stocks and bonds, but, well, yeah, sort of stocks and bonds. I don't know what I'm saying. You know what I'm trying to say. Investing. <laughs> Sometimes I talk too fast that I can't even understand myself. So pray for me, people. Have a little mercy on your girl here, okay? She's crazy. Moving right along. I just talked about leaving the planet and uh, all that stuff. Well, listen here. Back to my man, Elon Musk. Elon Musk, CEO of Tesla Motors, owns about 21% of Solar City. The two companies have agreed to combine in an all-stock deal, and they're calling it a marriage. It's so funny. I hope they don't get divorced. Stick it out, okay? The marriage has great potential, but critics say it is starting out with money troubles. Well, you know, I this is my personal opinion. I think if it is actually starting out with money troubles, I think it's because... Elon Musk, a.k.a. Tesla, I think it's because, I got some hair right there, I think it's because he is so great, and he is so busy right now, he's got all this stuff in his head, and he's just doing too much, he's doing too much, it's just like when I was writing my book, you know, I was writing all five stories at the same time, you know, so I had... 20 characters that I was writing for and I had to remember all their lives and what they told me in dreams and things like that. So I had to stop and say, all right, all of you people, I'm not Whoopi Goldberg. Y'all need to sit down here and let me just focus on these people right here. So I had to do that. I had to start writing like one story at a time. And I think that with Tesla, he's doing so much and he's so wanted and his vision is so positive and so good. I think he has too much on his plate and he needs to maybe slow down and back it up a little bit. So, you know, it just says here, Tesla, you know, Solar City is to join. Here's more money, people. $2.6 billion deal. It's unbelievable. Unbelievable. So, um, your boy Tesla, he's at it again. At it again. Wonderful. All right. Here's a story that I thought was super super cool i really like this because i've talked to you guys about um oh shoot i can't remember the name now but it's that that indoor sky diving place in roseville i can't remember i know it's sky something but um you know i told you guys i wanted to do that and actually i am going to do it this month so i'm gonna have video camera there and you can watch me fly and freak out but in light of that i thought this article was super cool so what am i gonna do check this out skydiver becomes the first person to jump and land without a parachute how cool is that check this out 42 year old skydiver with more than 18,000 jumps made history Saturday when he became the first person to leap from 25,000 feet without a parachute and he landed in a net instead. Isn't that, isn't that crazy? So skydiver Luke Akins signals to pilot Aaron Fitzgerald as he prepares to jump 
from a helicopter in Simi Valley as practice for Saturday's jump. He has successfully leaped without a parachute and landed into a net. I wish I could have seen that. That is so, 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 so awesome. But um, let's see. After a two-minute free fall, Luke Aikens, or Aikens, I'm not sure how to pronounce your name, sir, so if I messed it up, please accept my humble apology. But it says Luke Aikens um, landed dead center in a 100 by 100 foot net at the Big Sky Movie Ranch on the outskirts of Simi Valley. That is so cool. Can you imagine just being 25,000 feet up in the freaking air and just free falling for two minutes? Oh my goodness. I think that would be absolutely awesome. You know, there was a show years ago that used to come on with, I think it was Molly Sims, James Caan, Josh Demel. It was called Vegas. I think Vanessa Marcel was in that also. But there was one episode where some guy, I guess he kind of was in love with Molly Sims or Molly Mims. I think it's Sims though. And they took the helicopter ride. And once they got way up, he found out he was dying and he didn't tell anybody. I don't blame him. I wouldn't tell nobody either. But he found out he was dying. So he decided to do all this crazy stuff in his life. And one thing he wanted to do was go up in the helicopter and skydive. Well, instead of him jumping out of the airplane with his parachute on, he just jumped out. So that's how he died, which um, I kind of thought that was pretty cool. But anyway, um, here's another skydiver article, which is all about this gentleman here, Mr. Luke Akins. He's made the news again. Skydiver works with a net, but no parachute. And it said that he landed smack dead center right in the middle, not off to the side. There wasn't any kind of mishaps or anything. So, so that's super cool. So if you want to go online, um, look up Luke Akins. It's L-U-K-E. His last name is pronounced A-I-K-I-N as in Nancy, S as in Sam. So, um, so go check that out. I think that'd be pretty cool to watch, you know, to watch on YouTube. And last but not least, folks, we have another article here and it says, you will soon be able to relive the glory of 90s MTV. So, uh, do you long for the good old days of MTV? Remember? We got, was it, we got some men microwave oven and custom kitchen delivery. We got to move these refrigerators. We got to move this color TV. Remember? That was so cool. You know what? After I finish the show today, I'm going to go get on YouTube and I'm going to look that up. MTV. But um, anyway, do you long for the good old days of MTV? You know, the era with the reruns of the real world or Beavis and Butthead. You know, we're just a remote click away. And, you know, we're all grumbled about how the network never plays music videos anymore. Well, here's the good news, people. So check it out. Here's some good news. Um, MTV announced that it is rebranding VH1 Classic as MTV Classic, and they're going to feature throwback programming from the 90s and early 2000s. And this is mined from the company vaults, which is cool. You know, they keep all that stuff. They don't throw all that, any of that stuff away. But the new channel will launch on MTV's 35th anniversary. Let me see. This paper is from uh, July 29th, so they probably already launched that. But it'll be kicking off with a rebroadcast on the network's first hour. Okay, trivia, trivia, everybody. Do you know when MTV first hit the airwaves? I didn't either. I don't even remember. But 1981, that was their first hour. 1981? I think I was 13? Was I right? No, wait a minute. 81. 
I don't know. Oh, Gallag Osborne in 68. Figure it out, because I sure as obviously I can't count. But anyway, the network will feature a primetime programming block of favorite titles, including Daria, Eon Flux, Cribs, Jackass, oh my gosh, Beavis and Butthead, and Punked. Oh my god. Punked was so good. You know what? I can't even tell you how many times I've been punked in public. It is so embarrassing because, you know, I'm not saying I'm cool, but I'm kind of chilled and kind of funny. I'm not like super sensitive. So you can like poke fun at me and I don't go crying and, you know, I'm not all butt hurt. So I was like the punked person. The things, the way that I got punked was so clever and so funny because I never saw it coming. And with me being so goofy, I'm just like, oh, I just laugh at everything. I got laughed at. Rolling on the floor laughing, okay? Some of the stuff was just was just ridiculous. But, um, but from now on, Friday nights will be devoted to repeats of MTV Unplugged, people. I think that is great news. So anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that is going to be our show for today. Um, I know you're probably sick and tired of hearing me preach and rant about being good and being nice to each other, but, you know, I really, really believe that we can all come together and have some peace. You know, when you, you see somebody, I'll say this and then I'll stop, okay, but, you know, you see somebody and they're wearing, you know, they're from a foreign country and they're wearing something that you've never seen before that looks odd to you. You know, instead of making fun of that person and poking at them and laughing at them, telling them to go back to their country and they don't belong here and all that negative crap, how about having a conversation? Maybe go up to that person and introduce yourself, you know? And don't be disrespectful, just ask. Why are you wearing that outfit? What does it mean? Let's have a conversation. Let's get to know each other. Let's be friends, you know? When you, when you judge somebody and you don't even know that person, you might not realize it, but you know, you do yourself a grave injustice because you're missing out on an opportunity to learn something new about somebody else. You are missing out on an opportunity to be educated, you know, because that's what it's all about. We're supposed to be teaching each other about our differences, not hating each other and calling each other names. All right. Um, I have had a wonderful opportunity to talk to some cool people, and uh, it's just great. So anyway, if I forget anybody, please don't be mad. I didn't do it on purpose, but a great big shout out to um, Betty Crocker, Daily Dabber Weekly, Timekeeper, Bumpasaurus, Smoked Out Tutorials, uh, CM Conley, Cyclops, Surrounded by Keith, Malti, I love you, baby, and um, G Wiz. I can't think of anybody else. Uh, Freddie Bricks, Alex, and man, if I forgot you, I love you. I apologize. But this is going to do it for our show this evening. I thank you so much for your support. It truly, truly means a lot. I am very, very humbled. Um, Folks, keep hanging in there. The world is not all bad and negative. There's a lot of good people in this world. We just have to find them. You know, we just got to find them. So on that note, I am smelling like a rose, like somebody gave me on my birthday deathbed. <laughs> I don't know why I just did that. I think I'm borderline Tourette's or ticks or something. It's like all of a sudden I just heard it. Like, I am smelling like a rose. Anyway, people, I am so very grateful for everything, everything, and I am grateful for you too. So keep hanging in there. Be nice to people. Say a kind word. You never know how your words can make somebody's day great. There's nothing wrong with being happy. And if somebody tells you dark times are ahead, don't think the damn sky is falling. Just get prepared. Have water, vitamins, crackers, food. You should always be prepared for an emergency, okay? My book, Angels Passing Through.
Go out and buy it. It's a good damn book, people. It really is. And thank you for watching. I love you. God bless you all. <laughs> oh.